Good morning and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where, as I promised, we're talking with uh, Dr. Jean Sabanga, who is the bone lead for the Human Research Program. So that's an interesting title, bone lead. Yeah, essentially what that means is I am the point of contact for every question that comes up in bone, uh, whether it comes from engineering or whether it comes from fellow scientists or from medical operations. Well, I know that uh, we are, bones are one of the things we're really looking at uh, pretty hard since that uh, space flight's been shown to affect bones for astronauts, right? Yes. In, in fact, uh, probably uh, we've been studying it for more as long as we've been having human, uh, human space flight. And so what have we been seeing? Well, over the past 10, 15 years, uh, we've been applying a, a clinical diagnostic test for evaluating um, osteoporosis in our astronauts. And some of that data has, uh, has revealed that we have some very unique changes in our astronauts uh, up in space. Uh -huh. Such as? Um, well, they have a very accelerated rate of bone loss, and the bone loss is not uh, general across the, across the skeleton, but it's actually at specific sites. You know, it's the weight-bearing sites that we have here on Earth. You know, it's the lower half of our body versus the upper body. It's our hips. It's our, it's our spine. Things that they don't use so much when they're not in gravity. No, actually, it's the opposite. Okay. They use it a lot in gravity so that when they go up into space and they, uh, there's this big differential, there's this big deficit of having to, the bones to be strong, and so they seem to adapt more and lose more mass. Okay, well, I know, you know, we see commercials about drink more milk and things like that, but why, why is bone density important to begin with? Well, uh, um... I you know if you were to see some of the data that kind of uh, outlines bone loss and bone gain as we as humans you know uh, grow up and certainly age over time, you'll see that uh, we have our peak bone mass around the age of 30 and 35, and then after that it's kind of downhill all the way. It's you know it's a very slow process, and um, so uh, when we uh, think about osteoporosis, when we look at you know the elderly people with their dowagers humps or you know with uh, these fractures from very little trauma, you know. We, this is because of the condition of bone that it's deteriorated over time, and so you know it's not exactly a, a geriatric disease, but it's actually a geriatric consequence or a manifestation because of all of the risk factors that people are exposed to through life. And so we want to understand if the exposure of astronauts to prolonged periods up in space somehow contributes to osteoporosis as well. And so, what what are you finding so far? Well, we're finding with this this very rapid loss um, that this has a concern because it seems to be um, uh, the magnitude or or the uh, the range of losses seems to kind of mimic or model what we see in postmenopausal women, which okay. is actually a a, uh, um, a big concern for the clinical field here. However, uh, we also have a lot of research data that, that reveals some interesting things about these changes in space. One is that there are actually changes in bone structure, and wow. that, uh, um, you know, that, that helps us to understand uh, exactly how does, how does uh, exercise or how do any of these uh, pharmacological agents that we're using as countermeasures, you know, how does this really impact um, the structure of bone as well as their bone mineral density? Well, so speaking of countermeasures, I know that's one of the, the big things we're looking at is how we actually combat that uh, bone density loss. So what are, what are some of the things we're doing now? Um, well, for one thing, you know, being up in space is, you know, there are a lot of our constraints. Um, you know, we, we can't always give the best diet that we possibly can. We do as, as, as best as we can. There's some, there's some uh, issues with um, not having a lot of shielding, and so we don't have the ultraviolet light that helps us convert vitamin D, for example. I'm or sorry, say that again, ultraviolet light? Ultraviolet, that or the sunshine. You know, when we go okay. out into sunshine, and, and it helps us to, 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 um, to convert or metabolize vitamin D in our body, so okay. that helps us to absorb calcium. You know, we have all that shielding up in space on the uh -huh. space station, so that has an impact as well. And then um, just to be able to do exercise, you know, we are here in, in a one gravity um, environment here on Earth, and 24-7 we're exposed to that gravity. But up there, you know, the only kind of loading that they experience on the bone is maybe that those two hours or less than two hours that we have uh, from, from uh, doing exercises. And so what does exercise do that helps? Well, you know, we... Um, when it keeps up the, the, you know, keeps up, prevents kind of the uh, muscles from atrophying up in space. You know, we like to maintain those muscle forces on our bones. So essentially, you know, <coughs> excuse me, if, uh, if, if our bones don't have to work as hard as they do here on the earth because, you know, it's so easy to move in weightlessness or, um, 
um, you know, they don't have that gravitational force upon us, then, you know, bone's pretty smart. And they'll say, well, you know, I, I don't need to be as strong as I usually am on Earth. And so it's going to be very efficient and start to drop some of its mass. And that's what we're seeing with the breakdown of bone up in space. Okay, so efficiency, that's, a, that's an interesting way to put it. I hadn't thought of it like that. So same thing we see when we don't use our muscles, I guess, in space and on Earth. We start to lose them. The same thing happens with bones. That's it, exactly. It's, it's, it's a form of bone atrophy. Okay. And so one of the ways we work out our bones is the exercise. But I know there are other things y'all are doing for, for countermeasures. That's right. I mean, you know, we want to we want to exercise, kind of keep our give a reason for our bones to be strong. But in addition, you know, that might not be enough because, as I said, exercise is only about two hours a day or so, okay. or even less than that. And then we also want to be able to, you know, be able to provide uh, supplementation of vitamin D because of the issues of of not having the sunlight to as we do here on Earth. Um, and then there are also kind of therapeutic drugs that we use here on Earth to combat uh, metabolic bone diseases that are very similar to the breakdown that we see up in, uh, in space in our astronauts. So the, so the agents that we use to uh, prevent bone loss in postmenopausal women are, are being tested up there in space. Okay, so um, vitamin D, is that something, for instance, or the other, the other medicines, do all of the astronauts use them all the time or do some of them use it or how does that work? Well, essentially, it's it's a requirement. Uh, so, and so we are providing supplementation to them, and we do monitor those those uh, that supplementation to make sure that they have the you know the, the requirements to be able to um, you know maintain that level. Okay. And what are some of the results you're seeing so far? Um, well, you know, I, I, we don't have directly the, those results. I mean, I, this is a requirement, so we do want to kind of monitor that all the time. As far as the effects on the um, bone mineral density as a result of the bisphosphonates, they're very encouraging. Um, also, the effects of our new exercise device that's up there is very encouraging. Um, in, in, in fact, uh, you know, recently we had a, a uh, bone summit of clini a clinical panel, uh, advisory panel of, of some of the leaders in the bone field, and they had a chance to review view our medical and our research data, and they also came out with that finding that it's encouraging data, but the jury's still out on this still. Okay, well, that's good news. And what about, you know, when the astronauts get back to Earth and they start using their bones like normal again, does it start to correct itself, or is it uh, something you have to keep doing, I don't know, special exercises or taking more vitamin D and other, other medicines? Well, you know, that's that's a very interesting uh, thing that you bring up because uh, this is something that's dear to my heart. Essentially, you know, we know that there are changes in bone structure. Uh, we know that there are changes in bone mineral density. But, you know, the technology that we use now, which is the clinically accepted technology uh, for diagnosing, you know, osteoporosis in little old people or, or in postmenopausal women, uh, it's not quite, and it has some limitations when we apply it to our astronauts because our astronauts are, you know, they're healthy and they're robust and they go through a very novel change. You know, not everybody sure. here on Earth is exposed to a weightless environment. And so there, there's actually a requirement to look at, um, to collect more data as, as to how those change, what those changes are in bone. And so um, we have a flight study that's coming up to actually um, s to do a monitoring or surveillance of these changes in, in bone structure. And from those data, which come off of the quantitative computed tomography, which is a new, um, it's an X-ray based uh, imaging device. Um, so when we take those data and we analyze it with this computational tool called finite element modeling, it helps us to estimate the strength of the bones, particularly of the hip. And uh, with that knowledge, we know what are the loads that are going to cause that bone to fracture. We could use that to kind of direct their rehabilitation program, you know, how successful is is um, their countermeasure up in space, or how successful is uh, their rehab program after return to Earth, so that we could possibly avoid the, the risk for a post-mission fracture. Interesting. Wow. Well, so now what about the kind of the other side of it? Are the things that we're doing and finding out about bones with astronauts, is that helpful to people who are stuck here on Earth? Uh, yes, you know, there, there is a, a population of folks that um, who are immobilized and are at risk for fractures, you know, like the spinal cord injury uh, population is, is when we're always looking for new ways of evaluating bone as, as a predictor for fractures. And so you know, the technologies that we're applying, the modeling techniques, these are, you know, state-of-the-art kind of analyses. And if we could apply, you know, get those developed and validated and apply it to our patient population, you know, the, the um, 
this is going to be a, a great boon to the clinical field. Excellent. That's always good news. Thank you so much for coming and talking with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, it was my pleasure. This again was uh, Dr. Jean Sabanga, who is with the uh, Human Research Program, the BOEM lead for that program. So uh, we'll go back now to our regular uh, ISS update. Thanks.